Hello everyone. I greet you all in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Before we get started, I would like to thank all of you who are watching this simple video presentation. The aim of this presentation is not to promote any denomination, but only the love of God through His Holy Word in the Holy Bible. So relax and listen. Amen. Our topic for today is when the good is gone from the word goodbye. When the good is gone from the word goodbye. Amen. It's never easy to say goodbye to people you care about. Some goodbyes hurt so much while some are pleasant farewells, believing that they're just temporary parting till their next meetings and fellowship. But knowing the etymology of the word goodbye will give us an insight that goodbye was originally not a word that carries a sad connotation, but it was actually a declaration of blessing. The etymology of goodbye. The original goodbye dating from the 1570s was God, B-W-Y-E, like God boy, God, B-W-Y-E, which was a contraction of the farewell phrase, God be with ye. So that's goodbye. That means God be with ye. To God's children, goodbye or God be with ye is never a sad parting moment, nor it is a never-ending separation, but a never-ending fellowship with God the Creator, Yahweh Elohim Hayim, the living God, His Hebrew name in the Old Testament. He is the God who has this promise in Hebrews 13, 5 through 6 from the NIV. Keep your lives free from the love of money and be content with what you have. Because God has said, never will I leave you, never will I forsake you. So we say with confidence, the Lord is my helper. I will not be afraid. What can man do to me? Before his ascension to the right hand of the Father, the Lord Jesus Christ assured his disciples of the ever-abiding presence of God in them with these words in Matthew 28, 18 through 20 from the Amplified Bible. Jesus approached and breaking the silence, said to them, All authority, all power of rule in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go then and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them into the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit teaching them to observe everything that I have commanded you, and behold, I am with you all the days, perpetually, uniformly, and on every occasion, to the very close and consummation of the age. Amen. So let it be. The promise of God's abiding presence within His people is now through the Holy Spirit. The presence of the Father which was in the Lord Jesus Christ, who was the temple of God then, is still in the earth today and is now indwelling His church, the body of Christ, the temple of God, through the Holy Spirit. In John 14, 16 through 19, from the Amplified Bible, and I will ask the Father, 
And He will give you another comforter, counselor, helper, intercessor, advocate, strengthener, and standby, that He may remain with you forever. The Spirit of Truth, whom the world cannot receive, welcome, take to its heart, because it does not see Him or know and recognize Him. But you know and recognize Him, for He lives with you constantly and will be in you. I will not leave you as orphans, comfortless, desolate, bereaved, forlorn, helpless. I will come back to you just a little while now, and the world will not see me anymore, but you will see me because I live, you will live also. We have experienced and we've been experiencing the many goodness of God because He has never left us in and through the many hardships and troubles. In this trying time, in this generation, we hear of the many testimonies of the goodness of our ever-present God. Like David, we can also declare the greatness of the abiding presence of God. Let's listen to what David declared in Psalm 124, 1 through 8 from the New Living Translation. What if the Lord had not been on our side? Let all Israel repeat, What if the Lord had not been on our side when people attacked us? They would have swallowed us alive in their burning anger. The waters would have engulfed us. A torrent would have overwhelmed us. Yes, the raging waters of their fury would have overwhelmed our very lives. Praise the Lord, who did not let their teeth tear us apart. We escaped like a bird from a hunter's trap. The trap is broken and we are free. Our help is from the Lord who made heaven and earth. And also in Psalm 46, 1 through 7, from the New Living Translation, David said, God is our refuge and strength, always ready to help in times of trouble. So we will not fear when earthquakes come and the mountains crumble into the sea. Let the oceans roar and foam. Let the mountains tremble as the waters surge. A river brings joy to the city of our God, the sacred home of the Most High. Let me interject this point. The city of God mentioned here was Jerusalem, and now it's the church, His church, the church of the living God. Verse 5 says, God dwells in that city. It cannot be destroyed. From the very break of day, God will protect it. The nations are in chaos and their kingdoms crumble. God's voice thunders and the earth melts. The Lord of heaven's armies is here among us. The God of Israel is our fortress. Amen. Amen to that. Praise the Lord. Goodbye, or God be with ye, is not only a mere cliche to God's people, because it's an undeniable reality that we have received from His unconditional love, amazing grace, rich mercies, and proven to be infallible promises. We have a new life, because He made us to share of His divine nature. He has protected us from dangers 
both known and unknown. He has guided us through so many decisions that have resulted to the countless beneficial consequences for us. He has healed us from our sicknesses and diseases. In times of crisis, when we were somewhat perplexed because we didn't know what to do and we didn't know where or whom could we go for help, our God has shown Himself to be always our Jehovah Jireh. We have testimonies of supply in times of need, even from unexpected sources. Truly our God is great. Children of God, we have a blessed life that we should never trade for the world and for temporary pleasures. We could never find a more blessed life than what God has given us. Our goodbye is truly a God be with ye because he has not left us nor has he forsaken us hallelujah to god but the saddest thing that can ever happen to a person's life is when the good is gone from the word goodbye because it means god is gone to be with you from that phrase to be with you god is gone when the good is gone from the word goodbye and that's the saddest thing that could ever happen to one's life when the whole world became so filled with corruption and violence when the people were thinking only of evil continually that had hurt god so much in the time of Noah before the great flood that judged the whole world, Noah found grace in the eyes of God. We do not assume that Noah never sinned, but if he did sin, he brought his guilt to God and sought forgiveness. By faith, he offered the power or the proper sacrifice foreshadowing the cross of Christ. So by grace through faith, he was forgiven and truly declared righteous. The rest of the world had the same opportunity, but they rejected it. Grace was offered to the whole world through the preaching of Noah for 120 years, but they rejected God's grace that could have saved them from that judgment God was in their goodbyes but they just mocked God by not listening and not adhering to the preaching of Noah to the word of God they ignored and continually ignored God and his love mercy and grace until the good was gone from the word goodbye. That means God was gone from them totally. Not that God wanted for that to happen to them, but it all reached to a point of no return for all of them. As Isaiah said, that is the result of people's hardness of hearts, they are being pushed away from God by their sins and iniquities and not God leaving them. But their sins and iniquities made God to be gone from their goodbye. In Isaiah 59, 1-4, from the New Living Translation, Listen, the Lord's arm is not too weak to save you, nor is is his ear too deaf to hear your call? It's your sins that have cut you off from God. Because of your sins, he has turned away and will not listen anymore. Your hands are the hands of murderers. 
and your fingers are filthy with sin. Your lips are full of lies, and your mouth spews corruption. No one cares about being fair and honest. The people's lawsuits are based on lies. They conceive evil deeds and then give birth to sin. The Bible is filled with promises of forgiveness, deliverance from the judgment to come, and a life eternal in His eternal kingdom when we wholeheartedly come to God and truly repent of our sins. In 1 John 1, 8 through 10 from the New King James Version, If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make Him a liar and His word is not in us. In Acts 2, 37 through 42 from the New Century Version, when the people heard this, what did they hear? The preaching of Peter on the day of Pentecost. When the, when the people heard this, they felt guilty and asked Peter and the other apostles, What shall we do? Peter said to them, Change your hearts and lives, that is repentance. Change your hearts and lives and be baptized each one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. This promise, the promised Holy Spirit, is for you, for your children, and for all who are far away. It is for everyone the Lord our God calls to Himself. Peter warned them with many other words. He begged them, Save yourselves from the evil of today's people. Then those people who accepted what Peter said were baptized. About 3,000 people were added to the number of believers that day. They spent their time learning the apostles' teaching, sharing, breaking bread, and praying together. If your heart desires to be saved, and longs to be with God forever and ever. Now is the time. There's no guarantee of tomorrow to any of us. God is giving us just this moment, this day, this today. He wants you to come to Him right now. 2 Corinthians 6.2, Paul said in the New King James Version, I'm going to read Behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. In Hebrews 4, 7, Paul said also, Today, if you will hear His voice, do not harden your hearts. Act now. Come to God now. Don't procrastinate until the good is gone from the word goodbye. Or simply put, don't procrastinate until God is gone from the phrase, God be with ye. In Isaiah 55, 6-7, Isaiah said, Seek the Lord while He may be found. Call upon Him while He is near. Let the wicked forsake his way, and the unrighteous man his thoughts. Let him return to the Lord, and he will have mercy on him, and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. Let's all come to the Lord our God right now. Join me in a simple but must be sincere prayer. God is listening to us right now 
He can hear the cries of your seeking, crying, and thirsty heart. This is the right time. This is the right moment to come to God. Don't delay. Don't procrastinate. Act now while you have time. Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Let's all pray. Join with me in prayer. Almighty Father, we love you today. And we thank you for your word. Thank you that you are inviting us to inherit eternal life. Thank you for your love that's so unconditional. Thank you for your amazing grace. Today, Lord, we open our hearts to you and we welcome you to our hearts. Lord, we believe in your word. Father, help us in each step that we would be taking toward your salvation. Touch every heart today, Father. Touch them and help them to repent and be baptized in the precious name of the Lord Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. And I pray, Father, that you would fill them with the baptism in the Holy Spirit. Baptize them in the Holy Spirit, Father. We thank you so much. We give you praise and thanks right now. We claim the victory. And even, Lord, those who are sick, we claim healing for them right now. Hallelujah. Those who are in need, we claim supply for them right now. Those who are discouraged, we claim your hand to lift them up and strengthen them. Those who are backslider, backsliders, Lord, we pray, O oh God, that you would touch them that they would return to you by your strength, by your grace. In Jesus' name, this is our prayer today. Amen. Amen and amen. Thank you for watching. And if you think that you are blessed by this simple preaching, please press like, subscribe, and share to all your loved ones and your friends. I would like to thank you again and God bless you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen.